We are spring cleaning, baby. I'm not talking to you. All right, this is where the magic happens. I definitely have more clothes than the average person. Do I have a crazy amount of clothes? I don't know, you can judge that for yourself by the end of the video. But I do put a lot of thought into how I organize them. So almost everything is in this corner of my room. I have the left side of this bureau of drawers. My partner has the right side. And then I have little stuff like underwear, bras in that bookshelf you saw in the corner. And then we have a walk-in closet that we also split on the wall adjoining what I'm showing you now. As you can see, these drawers need a little bit of a refresh. I'm definitely a neat person, but I'm also sort of out of sight, out of mind. So as long as things are away, to me, they're in order. But today I wanna go through everything. I wanna look through everything, make sure there isn't anything that I'm holding on to that I don't want anymore, that I don't need anymore, that I don't use anymore. I also just wanna go through and sort of reorganize, refresh, refold, rebutton, rehang, just making everything look a little nicer. Okay, I'm starting in this little corner here. This is where I keep hair products, hair accessories like clips and scrunchies, as well as makeup, which honestly I don't use very much, but I like to have around just in case I wanna put on like a single centimeter of eyeliner. As you can see, actually pretty well in this clip, I have wavy hair. I don't really do much of a hair routine. I sort of just wash it and then do my middle part and kind of set my bangs. But every now and then I try one of those like curling scrunchy methods. All the stuff on top of here is what I use most often. So my glasses, my daily moisturizer, my deodorant, some jewelry, that kind of stuff. I feel like this area gets really dusty even though I use it most often. In fact, I'm sure everyone feels this way, but my apartment is so dusty. It gets dusty every three days, I swear to God. Maybe it's a New York City thing or maybe everyone feels that way about their apartment. Right now, most of my products are from La Roche-Posay. I really like their moisturizers, but I've been complaining a little bit about their sunscreen because I'll admit to this, I think I rub my eyes too often and then it gets in my eyes and it stings my eyes. I'm like a little kid that needs to use baby shampoo. A lot of the stuff in this little basket I don't use that often. I have like a toner and some chemical exfoliants that I haven't used for a year or two maybe. Though I do use that little like Trader Joe's rose water spray. I don't know what it does, but it feels nice. I recently moved like every pair of glasses I've ever owned to this area. They used to be sort of in my medicine cabinet area. I don't know why, I mean, two of them are not even the correct prescription anymore. Now on to the moment that everyone's been waiting for. We're going to organize my sock drawer. Honestly, when I took all the socks out of the drawer, I couldn't even believe I had fit that many socks in that little drawer. One of my issues is I have like five or six pairs of either really thick, like woolen socks or really fun, like fuzzy socks that you just get at Walmart or Walgreens or whatever. Those take up a lot of room. In my defense, I don't think I've even bought myself half of these socks. I think a lot of them are gifts and hand-me-downs, like things I've just found in my parents' house. One time I was visiting my grandparents and they gave me a bunch of their socks. That might have been because I was wearing socks with holes in them on that trip and they thought that was, you know, outrageous. Even though there are a lot of socks in here I feel like I don't like or I don't even wear that much, I don't really give away socks or try to sell them obviously because I feel like no one wants old socks and so I believe in myself that eventually I'll get around to wearing them enough that I'll wear them out and just, you know, the natural life cycle of socks, they'll get thrown away. I'm not actually doing my seasonal transition that I would do around this time usually, which is, you know, taking all my winter stuff and packing it away for the next couple of months because it's cold this April. This week in New York City is like 40 and 50 degrees. But I did take out a lot of my big woolen socks because I don't think I'll need them. This is my casual t-shirt drawer. So my nicer t-shirts I hang up in my closet, but these are like my sleep t-shirts, things I wear to work out, things I wear as like underlayers. A lot of these shirts have sentimental value. Some of them are from trips. Some of them I've had for 10 years. Some of them were gifts from my partner. And a couple of them are from when I worked at Marvel. A couple of my coworkers would get stuff for free or they would get those like physical loot boxes and then get t-shirts that they weren't interested in. They would pass them off to me. So that's why I have that huge Attack on Titan t-shirt and a huge Venom t-shirt. This drawer is sort of a continuation. It's like my exercise clothes plus casual tank tops plus my sleep shorts, the shorts I wear to sleep. As much as I like shopping, and I do like shopping, 
I actually hate buying utility oriented clothes. So I hate spending money on leggings, underwear, bras, that sort of stuff, especially because it can be so expensive and it's stuff that you're just wearing because you need to be comfortable while you're working out. Most of the sports bras I own, I have owned since high school. I do not wanna buy more sports bras. I'm not interested. This last one is my long sleeve t-shirts, my long sleeves. I weirdly struggle with this category of clothing because in my mind, if I'm cold, I wanna wear a sweater. If I'm semi-cold, I wanna wear like a cotton pullover. If I'm warm, then I wanna wear a t-shirt. If I'm really hot, I wanna wear a tank top. I'm like, where do the long sleeves come in? But I keep a couple of them, some turtlenecks for layering, my striped shirt collection, which is very much part of my identity in college, and another memento that I got from working New York Comic Con while I was at Marvel. Okay, let's very quickly review my work. Things are looking so much nicer, so well arranged. We have space, we have room to breathe, we can see all the options. I did put a couple of things aside that I'm thinking of getting rid of, and I'll do a whole compilation of those at the end of the video. But overall, so far so good. Taking a quick detour to the stuff that I keep outside of my bedroom. This is in my entryway. We have the shoes I wear most often, plus my winter accessories, scarves, hats, gloves. In the hallway is where we keep our coats, and I really wanted to go through and sort of rearrange everything here too. One of my favorite things to buy is coats and jackets. And I feel sort of bad because you can see visually, I am taking up about 80-85% of this coat rack and my partner's coats are like the last four. But by and large, I really feel like I wear all my coats. You know, I'm not really hanging on to coats for sentimental reasons. Actually, that's not true. I have two coats in my closet that I got from my grandparents that I don't wear that often, but I am holding on to. I actually feel pretty happy with my coat collection right now. There's nothing that I'm particularly looking for. I was thinking about getting another black long wool coat that's double breasted because the one I have is single breasted. And I do kind of want like a big statement long wool coat as well. That is looking much better. I put my partner's coats aside for him to look through to make sure he's wearing all of them because I know for a fact he isn't. Now we're getting into the real meat of the situation, which is my walk-in closet. In the middle here, I have a basket of bags, some shoes underneath, some hanging bags, for someone who didn't really wear purses for a while, I've definitely gotten into it, as well as belts. I didn't wear belts for a while either. Here's our baseball caps, my side, my partner's side. I also wanna go through his closet with him. Um, I'm actually using that corner for my dresses and we need to get some shelves for that. On the right, this is my side, sweaters, pullovers, pants, and everything that needs to be hung. I'm not even gonna show you what the bottom of this closet looks like because I'm embarrassed. There's dust bunnies the size of small mice in there. So we're gonna take everything out and get it cleaned up. As people say, when you want to do a closet clean out, the best thing to do is take everything out. Do not just rifle through. You're going to miss things. You're not going to take things seriously. You have to really empty your closet out. I'm just doing the floor for now because I want to get it clean and I'm going to go piece by piece in terms of emptying things out. I keep my sandals and my fancier shoes in this little thing in my closet because I don't use them very often and it's not sandal weather yet. I have an equal number of black to brown shoes right now in this collection, but that is completely new. I have a really hard time with the color brown and I think shoes and bags might be my sort of entryway into it. So I got a couple of brown shoes for this summer slash spring and I really wanna try to use them and see how I feel. This little shelving unit that I'm using, I would recommend against. I have a similar sort of thing. I'm using those hay crates for my bedside table and anything that has all those little nooks and crannies, that has all those little holes, there is dust in every single one of those. It is very difficult and time consuming to clean. I have this one just because I got it from my parents' house. I did not pay for this, but I would not buy something like this again. So here are my heels. I don't wear heels in a general sense. A couple of these I've had for a really long time. This one front and center, they were old when I got them. They're decrepit at this point, but they're very versatile and pretty comfortable. So really the only reason I own any of these is to go to weddings or other fancy dress events. I think I wore a pair of heels to a baptism recently, but I just keep these in their dust covers because I don't want them to get dusty and I don't really need to visually remember that they exist because when I know I need a pair of heels, I will get the heels out. 
Onto bags, just like everything else in my closet, I got almost every single one of these secondhand, except for that red bag, I got it at a sample sale, it's hero. And that little green bag my friend actually made for me. These are my hanging bags, I hang them. You know, you, you know a hanging bag when you see it. These two black bags are the ones I wear the most. They're both crossbody, they both fit a lot. And then everything else in this basket is a little bit on the casual side. So I'm able to sort of crumple them up or roll them up easily to get them in there. I don't wear this beige sort of nude shoulder bag anymore, but I don't know why I'm holding on to it. I think it's really cute and I think it's very classy. And I just keep giving it a chance because when I bought it, it was like revolutionary to me that I would even like and want to wear a purse. And that was the purse that sort of sparked that idea in me. So maybe it's symbolic. Moving on to the mother load, I am taking every piece of clothing off, well, not off the hangers, but out of the closet. In general, I edit my closet pretty frequently, so I don't think there's going to be a huge amount of clothing that I want to sell or get rid of from this purge. But it's good to have something like sort of official to look through everything and to force yourself to make decisions about things that you've been waffling on for a while. My organization for this part of my closet is sort of the same organizational principle I have for my coat rack, for even my sock drawer, everything. Things are first segmented by weight, so you would have all your heavy jackets together, all your heavy wool socks, whatever, in the same section. And then within that section, I put them in color order. I'm not going through my summer wardrobe as thoroughly because honestly, I don't remember what I was wearing or not wearing when it was hotter out, which is partially why I like to do like quarterly closet edits because as a season comes to an end, you have the freshest memory of what you were pulling, what you were ignoring. If you wanna give something one more year to really prove itself out, you can, but usually if I haven't worn something a single time all season in the season that it's worn in, it's got a target on its back. There are some exceptions to that rule. Generally, I feel like I want to love everything and wear everything I own. I want to think something is a great piece and I want to use it. Sometimes I keep things because I think they're great pieces and even though I might not be wearing it now, I do foresee a future in which I will start wearing it again. Like I have a Coop Copeen sort of mesh long sleeve that I was obsessed with and it's not speaking to me recently, but I kind of want to own it for the rest of my life because I feel like I've seen my mom have the same sort of pieces for her entire life and sometimes she wears them and sometimes she doesn't. Sometimes you can like rediscover your own closet. I'm definitely trying to keep that in mind because trend cycles also come in and out and I had a pair of perfect, like they fit me perfectly, green military pants in 2018 or something that I got rid of. I don't remember why, I think I was just a little confused about how to style them and I just had to go buy another pair because now I really do know how to style them and I want to. Okay, this is day two. Here are all the things that I'm going to try to give away or sell. First up are these fry boots, the ones on the left. I have two pairs of little black boots and I really only wear the ones on the right, they're Rachel Comey. So I don't need two pairs. The fry are in great condition. I actually got them resold and then never wore them. The next one is this little diesel shoulder bag. I really don't wear these little mini shoulder bags, but when I bought this, I was having a real diesel obsession. And I think I wore it a total of one time. These sunglasses I also, I think, have only worn once. I really wanted yellow lens sunglasses, and I actually still do, but I just don't like this style on me. I want something smaller and rounder and maybe a little bit more modern. This jacket is also diesel, part of my diesel obsession. The diesel shoes I bought, I still wear and love. It's just that the other stuff hasn't resonated with me. This is an amazing jacket. Great, beautiful vintage condition. It fits me, but it's a little too slim. It's a little too small for my liking. I'm also not the biggest fan of light wash denim in general. However, this dark denim jacket I have, I haven't been wearing either. In fact, these are the two denim jackets I own and I don't really like either of them. So I think I need to reconfigure what I'm looking for. I think what I need is something with a bigger boxier fit and contrast stitching. This coat is one of the first Yoji Yamamoto pieces I ever bought and I love it to death. It is a beautiful, beautiful piece, but I'm not wearing it and that I think is like a huge travesty and I want someone else to own it because I think it should be worn. It is a runway piece. I mean, I don't think they wore this specific coat on the runway, but I have found a picture of this style on the runway. So I know it's from fall 2009. And I think my issue with it is that it's a little bit too witchy for me, which is not a bad thing for someone else. There are a lot of witchy people out there. But I know it's not just a personal issue with black wool coats because the black wool coat I got this season, I've been wearing a lot. This trench coat I got actually so recently and I knew I was taking a chance on it when I got it because as I've said, I have a really hard time wearing brown clothes, but I just think it's really beautiful. If you can tell, the material is actually slightly iridescent, 
but I just have been wearing my tan trench coats way more than this one. I think I've worn this a total of once. I feel like I know how to style it, but it just doesn't feel like me. I also feel like I wanted it as a nighttime piece, kind of like a going out jacket, but it's actually been too cold to wear this at night and it doesn't really feel right for the day. Next up is this just really comfy brown sweater. I think it's originally from H&M, but I found it at a thrift store. I just, besides me looking like reverse shaggy right now, brown, it doesn't work for me, I'm sorry. This is another relic from my Marvel days. Fing Fang Foom, if you don't know, he's like this big dragon. Actually, it looks kind of cute with these dark green pants. The like neon color combination is nice. However, I just don't wear it. This next shirt is a sort of micro trend fail for me. You know when everybody was wearing the little like sports jerseys, the bloquette style? I saw this shirt at a thrift store. It was like $5 or whatever. And I was like, fine, okay, I'll get it. The thing that actually put me over the edge is because it's the Miami Dolphins. And I was a big fan of Ace Ventura growing up. If you know, you know. This sweater is a cry for help. I have been looking for a good gray sweater for years maybe now. And I had one that I liked from Everly and I think I dried it or something. I messed it up. And so I've been looking for a replacement. That one was dark gray. I don't mind having a light gray. I just can't find anything. So I got this diesel one. It is beautiful. It's a beautiful piece. I think it's better for someone who actually doesn't have boobs, but it was a subtle piece and I'm not happy with it. I continue my search. This is a very fun light blue fleece pullover. It's giving like 90s ski and I thrifted it and I thought it was really cute and interesting and different, but I haven't been wearing it. I used to wear it a lot. It is pretty warm. Unfortunately, I've given it as much time as I can and I think it's time to move on. This is an amazing top. I got from this independent brand. I think this woman just like makes all the clothes herself. I don't know how to pronounce it, but the tag says Maye. She still has an Instagram. She still makes clothes, nothing in this style. In fact, I think every top she makes is sort of one of a kind, at least this one was. Uh, I'm kind of torn on this. Like I don't really go clubbing anymore, but if I did, we are now getting to the pants section of the video. So trigger warning, fat ass. This is another trend I wanted to try and I tried it and it's not for me. So if anybody wants these capris, let me know. Here's the weird thing about this pair of jeans. I got them tailored, so they fit me pretty well. They're very, very comfortable. However, I don't wear them out of my house. They're like my sweatpants jeans. I just have other pairs of dark blue denim that I like more for like styling purposes. And so this one has become my house pants. Something that is on my current buy list is a nice pair of khaki trousers. I was thinking that I wanted a pleated pair, but I went to a thrift store recently and I tried on every single pleated pair that was in my size and they all looked bad on me, including this one, which I got and then decided against. I've actually been waffling on this pair of jeans for years now. The weird thing about them is they fit me perfectly no alterations. This is how they came and they fit really well. However, they have these weird like wide set pockets on the butt. I don't know if that bothers me enough, but I don't wear them much. I got these and another pair of linen pants last summer because I don't like shorts. So I was like, okay, if you're not gonna wear shorts, you have to wear like nice light pants. But both of them look a little bit too much like pajama pants to me. And that's been putting me off. So I feel like I need to get rid of them and come up with some different solutions. So that's it. I'm probably going to do an Instagram sale for some of this stuff. And I just want to say thank you so much for watching. I know this was a long one. It took me a long time to film. It took me a long time to edit. Love you guys. Let me know what you think.